Hi, this is Chris Hoy. Thank you for joining me on Create with Chris. Today I will be showing you how to paint Baking Day. I'm excited to share some intriguing techniques that I use to create this unique project. See how just a little bit of paint creates dramatic and impressive results. So grab your brushes and let's get started. Because the pieces are MDF, it, which is a wood-based product, I do seal before I begin with a nice even coat of multi-purpose sealer. I'm using a three-quarter inch oval wash to be able to apply the product quickly and smoothly. This brush has super soft bristles and it's really easy to get that on there quickly. Give it a quick dry and lightly sand it with a fine grit sandpaper. That will ensure a super smooth surface and the paint will adhere well. Using that same three quarter inch oval wash, I'm slip slapping bleach sand on about the top third or top quarter. And I'm applying a little bit of Snow White basically in the center. To create the lace curtain, I want to make sure it fits perfectly within the window pane overlay so i want to make sure i put that piece on there line it up once it is in the perfect position i'm going to secure it with a piece of painter's tape just so it doesn't shift around i'm using a three or number four spectacular stencil brush i've loaded it with a little bit of raw umber wipe it over a paper towel to get rid of that excess paint that will ensure clean, crisp lines through the stencil and you won't get any of that uh, uneven edges or drippiness that runs under the stencil. Just make sure it's gonna be okay. Clean up any areas that are maybe a little bit uneven or don't have the enough paint on them. It's so easy with the tape there, you can lift it up and check it. Now I want to create the bottom edge of that lace curtain and I'm just loading the toe of my three quarter inch awesome angle. I'm not doing a smooth float, just kind of tapping it in there. I kind of think it looks a little bit like a ruffled edge with having it uneven like it's um, a little bit of a lace design underneath as well. I did transfer the design on the bowl of apples and kind of where the flowers are just so I know placement. I don't care if this paint is heavy. I just want a nice movement, quiet movement in the background. I wanted it to be dark. Picked up a little bit of Payne's Gray on the toe of my half inch awesome angle. Just kind of floating that in and blending it together softly. I did give it a dry. Switched over to a number 10 filbert, picked up some thicket and put a little bit of that on. Then I picked up some Payne's Gray and kind of slip slapped it around. And you notice it's not blended yet, but because my paint is very loose, putting some more darkness in there with Payne's Gray, because my paint is very loose, it's workable for a long period of time. If you ha live in an area that's very arid and you need more open time, I like the fast dry glaze medium. Also, you could mist it very lightly with water to help keep that paint moving. I did want a bright area kind of behind the apples, in between the apples and the bouquet. So letting that be just a little bit lighter. If this is not to your satisfaction, let it dry and go back and add more. I just love the way that it it just almost kind of creates itself. Putting a little more raw umber in there. I did put the window pane overlay back on, shifted it up and marked the top edge of the curtain. This is because I want to add some shading there and I wanted to make sure it goes behind the window. I don't want any empty void area so when I put that frame back on I was like oops I didn't do that place. Picked up a little bit of Payne's Gray to create shadowing, a little bit of thicket to add a hint of color. My motto a little bit of paint makes a big difference. It's uh, a little bit blended on my brush so I have a kind of a soft mix between thicket, Payne's Gray, I picked up a little bit of raw umber. I love the way that looks. Now in the background before I when I stenciled before the 
background was raw umber but since then we've added all these other colors in the background so I'm repositioning that stencil have a little bit of Payne's Gray on my stencil brush that's going to change the tone of those cutouts in the curtain this is where the magic starts to happen I've created the folds with a little bit of shading that's floated now I'm going to brighten the tips of that lace look how it becomes very intricate looking and this has really uh, been a very quick application of paint just these little touches make such a big difference always keep an eye I lay that frame back over top just to see what the end effect is going to look like where I'm going to need to add some shading I want those corners a little bit darker and I'm just leaving that in place and shifting it up and over so that it when I float that on there it's definitely going to be behind the frame you can see how it's shifted uh, by looking at the side edges and create that darkness in the corners I want to go in and just brighten add a little sp little splotches of highlight that shading's a little bit wet so I'm getting some blending I don't want just super stark white just a little hint of the bottom edge even in those darker areas a little bit of paint is all that's needed it doesn't have to be perfect and precise and well controlled switched over to my fan, uh, fabulous flat and I'm just base coating in the apple bowl and you notice I don't do this real solid and heavy I kind of want this to look like an old crock and I thought by having it not perfect would create more I don't know distress or age but I did want that top rim to not be chattered so definitely we'll pay attention to that as it uh, we proceed the apples are wild berry it's not quite a bright red I just wanted to get that base coat in there again this is not perfect I'm using my fantastic filbert to create that shape I love using an oval tip brush to do rounded shapes just works out so much easier than trying to struggle with um, a brush that has a sharp edge or a straight corners on it I'm going to base coat that rolling pin in there I have some other colors in there I wanted toffee but when I painted it in there the other colors I don't clean my brushes out a lot and I, I like that look of the color so I'm letting that just blend in and work everything that I'm painting is going to be behind a window so it's not going to be crisp and clean and perfect it'll be a little bit uh, not distorted but a little bit muted because it is behind glass this is adding in the stems for the apple branches and I'm I painted a glass jar so I want to make sure that the the indication of the stems are back there although they're not crisp and clean and perfect I just wanted that look of stems and I used uh, toffee picked up a little bit of thicket because I thought that might add a little bit of reflection not only from the water that's going to be in the vase but also maybe some green from the uh, greenery in the bouquet very loose kind of touching the apples up you can see that background's kind of peeking through the base coat I don't mind a little bit of that but I don't want it to look like oops it was not uh, painted correctly it going in with some deep burgundy on the toe of my half inch awesome angle I love painting like this because it's so very uh, I don't want to say uncontrolled but very loose and it's kind of fun to see what will happen when you just let the brush create some of those highlights and shadowing this is just the basic application of the highlights and shading but you can see all of a sudden it's starting to look like a rounded shape just that little bit of white I wanted to decide where I wanted the stems at so there's a little bowl where those stems are going to dip in going back with thinned Payne's gray to create the shadowing 
looks a little bit dark, but it's a lot thinner than what it looks like in the video. You, you can see the sparkle from the water, so it's very thin. A little bit of paint makes such a big difference. My light source is from the top right, so I'm going to create that shadow on the bottom, in between overlay shadows, and on the left side. Decide where those stems are going to be, and then I just dipped out that little bowl area. Now I'm going to go back to reinforce those highlights and around that little bit of a bowl. Still, they're very loose, and I can take, I have paint mostly on the toe of my brush, but I can use the heel of my brush to blend it together and soften it. I love using an angle because it is so incredibly versatile. Um, it doesn't have to be a perfect stroke. It can be moved around and manipulated. And as long as you keep that paint fluid, it will work out wonderfully. Wanted to just create the outline of the jar that the bouquet is in. And I've just, <laughs> I have very loose paint on my brush. And I've just kind of made, mostly uh, do the outline and then I pull it across to create that rim, pull some highlights down, boom, 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 there's your glass jar. Now I will go back and tweak it, but I just wanted to get the bones kind of floated in and you can see the indication of those stems in the behind the highlights. Just a super quick, fun way to create the look of glass. Loading some light cinnamon on the toe of my brush to float the edges of the rolling pin. And because I can, <laughs> my awesome angles are really awesome. I can stay on the toe of my brush and create that look of wood grain very easily. Now I'm just kind of base coating or floating in some basic shading with raw umber. And remember those kind of, uh, I would say unfinished base coat areas. And now they look like part of the dish. Just always fascinates me how easy it is to make things look so much more impressive with just a little bit of paint. And I wanted to highlight that edge of the rim that cleans up that edge between the apples and the rim of the bowl and I just use the toe of my brush. I'm not flipping over to a liner. It's, it's not that fussy. This is just a very loose application of paint to create those highlights and shaded areas. Make sure when doing the rolling pin that it does recede below the windowsill. Nothing worse than having an empty spot once everything is uh, painted in. A little bit of deep burgundy to create that shadowed area on the rolling pin handle. Some snow white. Everything is still wet so I can blend it together very easily. Using my number five radical round. I love this brush. It has a nice sharp point. Big fat, fat belly so I can paint a lot of area with it before I have to reload. And I think that creates continuity. I wanted to brighten that flat end of the rolling pin, just staying on the toe of that angle and creating that wood grain. Now I'm using my number five radical round as I kind of smash the tip down and it creates a beautiful filbert edge. And I'm base coating the petals of the apple blossoms with bleached sand. And I don't know how well it shows up, but this paint is very, very loose. I have quite a bit of water in it. And I don't want each flower to be symmetrical. I want buds. I want the flowers to be kind of uh, not square face on, but some turn to the side. Some will be behind others. I've not reloaded yet, so you can see how the paint gets lighter and darker. This is the first coat of paint or the first layer. It's very thin. I like the way that dark background kind of 
transcends through the paint to create the look of almost shadowing. And I can just lay those flowers in. Um, I want it to be a full bouquet with apple blossoms. They kind of cluster. Not too worried about how perfectly they look. I just want to fill it in. Um, make sure, and I was kind of worried because they're starting to look like they're all in a row and I definitely didn't want that. But I knew I could fix it later on. So instead of focusing so hard on one element, just kind of create the whole design and then as it evolves, see how it works together. I have loaded the toe of my number two radical round with raw umber just to lay in thicker, more distinct branches and make sure that the blossoms are somewhat connected to actual branches. And that gives that look of connection, adding a little bit of I picked up toffee, but I put a little bit of the wild berry in there to just give a hint of color. Starting to add the highlights, a little bit of detail, anywhere these uh, branches need to contrast from the background. Just add a little bit of this highlight color in there. It definitely starts to uh, make those very distinct. I darkened the center, just a little bit of thin to Payne's Gray in the centers and not every single flower is going to be facing front and center. But I did take that Payne's Gray just to pop in there. I thought that looked a, like um, a nice shadowing color. And this flower I'm working on now is just a little bit wet, but that's okay. I can uh, pop some of that Payne's Gray in there for and I'll manipulate it later. Highlighted the rolling pin with a little bit of bleach sand and just kind of take a look at it to make sure everything's starting to balance out. Now I'm going in with Snow White to highlight some of the petals. My light source is from the top right so any place I highlight is where the sunlight is going to be splashing on the flowers so kind of think about how the, the flowers will be facing the window and the light that's coming in. Not all of the petals will get the same amount of highlight. And if you kind of squint your eyes or take a picture or hold it up to a mirror, it starts to really become clear how the flowers are standing out in the sunlight. Took a little bit of that toffee to kind of put a base at the bottom of the buds uh, just to make them look like they're connected to the stems or to the branches. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Don't miss out on other videos that I have as well. Now I'm taking my Epic Script Liner and Raw Umber to paint the stems for the apples. And I wanted to make sure they didn't all go the same direction. It's just a little more interesting. Picked up some of the thicket. I want to start to put in the indication of background leaves. This I was not careful with the brush strokes, but I was more careful with placement. I wanted these to be just a little bit more... Uh, loose or just a little more obscure in the background. So I kind of just softly brushed them in and then I take my finger and kind of smudge them a little bit to mute them down. There's still going to be more layers of paint so this is just think about it as a base coat of clusters of leaves in the background. Some will get highlighted, some will stay muted and in the distance. But I wanted that bouquet to be full of leaves, full of flowers, and this is just a real good way to fill it up. I wanted to put leaves on each of the apples just to bring that color on down. Right now it's just kind of plain, and most of the colors are the same. We've just got a little bit of red in there for 
color. So now we're I'm starting to bring in that green to really break up all of that kind of darkness. We really haven't added too many highlights at this point. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any suggestions on future videos, what you would like to see, I'm always open for suggestions. Going in now with foliage green just to brighten up add a little bit of color on those leaves not too super fussy i do know that i want to point at the end but other than that i just want to kind of like on those background leaves just give that hint of color back there when i go in with the shading and the highlighting that's when i'm going to be just a little more careful and you can see i'm just kind of popping that color in there it's not a precise float i'm using my Filbert, so it's it's not you can see how loose it is it's just not a real controlled stroke I love brush strokes and I think the result of just pulling brush strokes in really enhances and creates a lot more interest than if it were really controlled and super um, precision strokes. This is Celery Shoot. I wanted to put some strong highlights in there. They look super strong right now, but they're going to work. Just kind of popping popping them in here and there. Now on that leaf there, on the app, all the leaves on the apples, I definitely want those to stand out nice and strong. Going back with a little more Snow White, just to really start to ramp up those highlights and I like to work instead of doing one total flower and then the next total flower or the you know the flowers and then the jar and then the apples I like to put all the highlights in at the same time and build them up to me it it seems to create more continuity the light source hits everything with the same intensity so the strongest highlight should all be balanced. The flower centers need a little bit of um, detail in them and I'm using Celery Shoot and my Epic Script Liner just pulling out some little straight lines to give that indication of all of those sepals in the middle of the flower. It just gives a little bit of whimsy and I think after these are added in it looks like it's really uh, taken a lot of time to create everything that has been added. And I, I, I like the way it looks. I like the fullness. I like the flowers uh, placement. Going in now with Payne's Gray, this is my binding color. This is what's going to pull everything together and make everything work. Using the Payne's Gray to shade around, behind, between, to separate, this is where the magic happens. So anything I want to put in the background, I will use Payne's Gray to push it back. Up the edges, I can push the flowers back. I can make the leaves go in front of. I can make them recede. Keep in mind where the light source is, where the shadows will be mostly on the left side. And those uh, highlights that were not very precise and looked a little bit erratic now they can they are starting to blend in and I'm just doing a little bit of a drop shadow be below the leaves like on the glass jar and where the apples just to make a little bit more darkness and again this will help to make the shadowing very consistent if it's created all at the same time. Once that shading is in there, let it dry. Now I'm going in with bleach sand to highlight those apple stems and really pull them out and lift them off of the background. A little bit of celery shoot. I'm going to create the veining on the leaves deepen those bowls a little bit with raw umber 
There's where the celery shoot is to connect the leaves to the stems. It's the little details that make such a big difference. And I do use my fingers a lot just to smudge or blend. It's a perfect tool and I never lose it. I always know exactly where it's at. I thought the bowl should have some more I needed more color down at the bottom, so I thought if I put a stripe on the bowl, that would help pull the reds down. They always say groups of threes. I have the apples, the rolling pin handle, and now the stripe on the bowl. And I, that's with the wild berry. And then I put a little bit of highlights with the snow white and deepened it with deep burgundy. I thought the bowl looked a little bit dirty. I was kind of concerned about that early on, but until I got to this part, I wasn't sure I needed to mess with it, but now that I'm there, I decided it needed to be just a little bit brighter and a little bit cleaner. Same thing with the rim. And this is so easy to go back and clean up and straighten up um, instead of fussing with it in the beginning when I wasn't really sure if I wait until I'm to that point and I thought it needed to be just a little bit brighter still. So, and this is the light side. Brightening up the highlights on the petals. I started using my Epic Script Liner, but it was ended up being too fussy and too much detail and I had to go back in and kind of smudge it all out. So I dropped over to my quarter inch awesome angle and you can see how much quicker that is. I can just go in, touch and blend and it looks not only so much better, but it goes quicker. And I think strokes that flow well also look well. That should be my other motto. A little bit of paint makes a big difference and strokes that flow well look, look well. Okay. I'm putting a little bit of wild berry in the flowers. They were just a little too monotone. Not only do apple blossoms have a little pink on them, but it also kind of reflects that the apple. And you can pull that into the flowers and it just really gives that nice, warms them up a little bit, gives them a little more life. Using my quarter inch awesome angle just to float that in. You can tell I have a, just a hint of color on my brush. I can do a lot before I have to go back and reload. More white on there, a little bit of color makes a big difference, and just little touches really is all that is needed. I did base coat the entire pie with bleach sand. It's just going to give a bright base to build all the other colors on. When working on small pieces, I always pull the paint toward the outer edge, keeps the edges clean, and also keeps the, the paint from dripping down. Load the toe of my half inch awesome angle with Payne's Gray just to kind of float beneath the crust of the pie. This is such a quick, quick little piece to paint up. Going back now with a little bit of toffee and bring that pie crust color into the pie, floating mostly on the bottom edge and you can tell it's not real smooth, but I'm okay with that because I have several more layers to put on. I try to not be messy, but I'm not fussy either. So keep that in mind. I'm doing the, the base of the crust of the pie now. I did the, the rim. I guess that's the pie shell. And I'm pulling this all the way up. I just kind of think that it has that pastry look doesn't need to be super smooth. Now I'm going back again with Payne's Gray and you can see how I crisp up those that edge underneath the pie shell just a little bit more. With each layer of paint I will sharpen that up and by the time I'm finished it'll look super smooth and even. And I'm just laying on this. I thought I would have ridges in the pie pan but I didn't like that way that looked, so I smoothed it out. I just thought I'd play around with a bit. And because my paint is so fluid, I can move it around quickly. The first layer was very thin. The second layer is starting to show um, deep in the shaded areas. And this is where, with light cinnamon, I want to 
create the side edges of that pie shell and then also the where the crust wraps around the top of the shell. This is the bottom edge, just a little bit of that light cinnamon. Again, I'm kind of pat floating it because I don't want it to be perfect smooth. I want it to look a little bit handmade on the crust. And so I'm just kind of tapping and pulling and letting it float out. Now I can go in with the bottom edge of the shell and bring that crust all the way kind of creates the, the entire shape of the pie. I pull that up just a little bit. Doesn't take much. And then I'm using my number two radical round to paint those vent shapes with a little bit of light cinnamon. Floating Snow White along the top. Snow White always is super bright when it's first put on, but it's very translucent. So as it dries, it definitely tones down. So this will take probably at least a couple coats to get the, the intensity that I want for the pie shell. Pull that all around the top edge toward the back, but not quite to the back. Highlight the top of the pie, bring those highlights down kind of around those vent holes. And I'm just kind of making that right side just a little bit stronger. Again, that's the light source, so I'll keep that side just a little bit brighter and just kind of pull those down. If you have any comments, please let me know. Strengthening that shaded area with a little bit of raw umber. I'm using my quarter inch awesome angle. And this is where I'm using the toe of my brush just to really sharpen up those edges and create that nice, smooth edge that I want. A little bit of highlight on the pie pan. Doesn't take much. Sharpen that shading up a little bit with raw umber using the toe of my brush. keeping that left side just a little bit darker. Blend that in and be careful, the raw umber can turn it kind of greenish and it looks a little bit dirty if it's too heavy or too strong. So just keep this a light float. More can always easily be added. I did go back and add a little bit of raw umber to strengthen just the very darkest areas right at the base of the pie shell. And I keep that a really tight float so that it doesn't blend up. I don't want a dirty pie. And just a little bit on the side, just a hint of color. A little bit of paint makes a big difference, especially on this. To make those vents stand out a little more, I highlighted the left side of each one of those vents with a very thin line of Snow White. And I'm using my Epic Script Liner. If you've not tried this little brush, it's an 18 knot, a little bit longer than a liner, shorter than a script, so it provides excellent control. The length of it allows for longer brush strokes, less reloading, so you get a longer, smoother line work. And if you have longer, smoother line work, everything's going to look better. And you can see how that creates the dimension. It just gives you that look of the thickness of the pie shell. Brighten those highlights up on that pie shell or pie pan just a little bit more. <laughs> Again, I use my finger a lot just to smudge it or to soften those colors. On the window pane overlay, it's really hard to paint these little tiny areas without paint dripping down the side edges. So I have found out those little triangle cosmetic sponges have such a super flat bottom on them and they're really dense. So I can load paint on the sponge and tap it on very lightly. Because it's a sponge, if it's pressed really hard, it'll just smoosh down the side edges. So no different than a brush. If it takes two layers with a brush, 
it's going to take two layers with a sponge. Light press, make sure that the sponge is not overloaded. If there's thick paint on the bottom of the sponge, it's just going to drip down the side edges. So just a very, very light touch. Let it dry, lightly sand, and apply another layer over top of it. I'm using my Spectacular Stencil Brush and Toffee to dry brush the look of wood grain over the window pane. Notice I follow the direction of the wood grain. So pick your direction and make sure that your brush strokes also follow that direction. And then I go across at the top. Just a very light dry brush and it's just almost kind of streaky. It's hard to tell on the camera, but it's just a very light streaky dry brush. Make sure that there's not too much paint that gets in those little tabs because it will make it difficult for it to fit into the base. I've loaded my incredible comb with light cinnamon. This is an amazing brush. It provides amazing texture. I should say incredible texture, but it has to be loaded correctly. A light, thin application of paint and a very light touch. If it's too thick, you get that solid edge. You can see I just painted on there. So stay light on the tips. If it's pressed down hard, it's just a solid float. I uh, did one application, let it dry, and then I went in and filled in just to make sure it was. I had enough uh, wood grain, and I can go back and add more once I get my shading in if I need it. I'm adding the shading where the wood planks meet with raw umber, just a float to divide those. It's the little details that make a big difference. So adding these uh, little connections all of a sudden brings it a little more to life. Taking that raw umber, I'm going down the outer sides, all the way around the outer edge with the raw umber. Just going to, I always think it kind of finishes up the outer edge. And I know this is a frame, but it also provides a frame on the frame if that side edge is just a little bit different. And I went around all the edges and all the bottom sides, except for, I, I didn't do the top edge at the the top of the window or at the window sill, just the bottom edges on those. Wow, what a difference, right? Going to highlight the top with a little bit of Snow White. It just brings a little bit of brightness in and the inside edges. I'm not doing um, any place else, just that top edge the inside edges, and then across the bottom of that windowsill, just to brighten that up. Oh, I did a little bit in there. I think that when I did that, it was a little dark. So any place that's a little bit dark, put a little bit of brightness in there, just helps to perk it up a little bit. All the supplies I use are available at cdwood.com, and everything's going to be listed below. This is the base. I am base coating it with bleach sand. And you notice I'm pulling the paint away. Be careful not to get paint in that slot. If you do, it does make it difficult for those pieces to fit. They fit well without paint. Once the layers of paint are added, sometimes it makes it a little bit hard to get in there. So I did go in and slip slap some Snow White. I'm putting the lace there and I wanted that center area to be a little brighter. Same thing as on the top of the um, curtains that on the window. I am just pretty much repeating the same technique, uh, stenciling with a little bit of raw umber. And I did use the other stencil. There's two beautiful lace stencils on this, um, two lace designs on this stencil, and both of them are just really pretty. So I thought I would shake it up a little bit and use something different so it didn't look like the lady took her curtains and put them on our windowsill. This is just a little decorative doily. Taking the toe of my quarter inch angle just to create the bottom edge of that lace that's draped over the windowsill. 
and you can see I'm just blending it out. I don't want a hard edge. So I'm just taking the, the clean part of my brush and just softening it out. I didn't like that the back side uh, didn't have that brightness in the center of it. The back side was kind of an afterthought. So I went back and brightened it up and then I'm just going to go over it again with the raw umber and boom, it's just that easy to blend it in and make it look the same as the front. A little bit of thicket. I thought this needed a little bit of color and I love the way it turned out. Almost looks like a marble windowsill. Uh, it, it just needed to be more than just plain. And I took that color and just blended it out toward the edges. Now I'm creating the folds with the Payne's Gray. I've loaded the quarter inch angle, just bringing it down. It's not going to be as ruffled as the curtains, but it's just going to be maybe a little bit wrinkled by laying there, kind of uh, bunched up because the pie was set on it and it's just kind of scooted around a little bit. Pick up a little bit of raw umber and blend that in, kind of darken it down, not too much. This is very, very thin and I can go back and you can see how those colors can be blended super easily. But remember, it's just a very, very light wash of color. I'm kind of a dark painter. I like the deep, dark, rich colors. If you're more on the light side, just back off on the strength of the color and it'll appear much lighter. Back with a little more Payne's Gray. I thought it was getting too brown. So the colors can be easily manipulated. I didn't want a, a sharp, solid um, shade under that, so I'm bringing that Payne's Gray out to blend that raw umber into that thicket. Just kind of helps pull those colors together. A Little bit of paint makes a big difference. Now it's kind of going from grungy to almost that marbled effect, which I thought was just beautiful. Just going in with the toe of my brush to ruffle those bottom edges and brighten them up. Not being super fussy, I just want to bring a little bit of that brightness in. And look how that really starts to pop. I just love when I do something and it kind of amazes myself and I'm going, wow, that is super cool. I love the contrast between that bright and the dark. I think that really, I wasn't going to do right there, but I think it really um, makes it pop and creates a lot of interest. I did the back side just a little bit shorter because I thought the pie would be sitting mostly on the front. And I didn't want it the same on both sides. I'm just adding a little bit of brightness up in the areas where I thought that sunlight might hit a little bit stronger. Even though it's kind of gathered and ruffled, there's still going to be some light areas in there. A few little highlights, just kind of dry brushing those on. These are all the finished pieces, and I thought before I put the window together that it would be fun to paint a few glass reflections. I tried that, but I wasn't a fan of it because of all of the busyness of the uh, blossoms and the apples, it just seemed a little confusing. So I thought it would be fun to cut a piece of mylar. And this is just a piece of clear mylar that I had from something I bought. I just cut a section of it off of the packaging, cut it to size, and then slip it in between the window frame and the insert and glue it together. Or another option would be to just varnish it using a clear glossy varnish. I did seal all of the other pieces with ultramat varnish. I arranged the pieces and glued them together using Aline's Tacky Glue. If the insert seems a little bit tight for the slot, just simply lightly sand it with a little bit of sandpaper until it slips in easily. I really like how this turned out. I hope you learned a few new tips, tricks, and techniques to make your painting world a little more fun. I would love to hear from you, so let me know if you have any comments or questions. Be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on future videos. Everything I used is listed in the links below. Thank you for joining me, and I look forward to our next painting adventure together. Remember, a little bit of paint makes a big difference.